So you want to do the great search? Yeah, let's, let's, let's get, get right to it. Okay, so I'm going to add the song back later. <laughs> but uh, for now, it's... Uh, it's the great search. Yeah, beep, 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 Yeah, we'll probably do a retro version. Do, okay. Do, 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 beep, beep, beep. Okay. Great search brought to you by DigiKey and Adafruit every single week. Lady Ada uses her powers of engineering to find stuff on digikey.com. We're going to be talking about the 5-5 five, five timer this week. Lady Ada, what is a 5-5 five, five timer? Uh, a 555, five, uh, also known as a triple nickel, is a uh, you know special chip that kind of was invented, I think, in like 76 or so. Um, it's a um, all-in-one non-microcontroller chip that can be used for uh, timing purposes or, or, or oscillator purposes. It can uh, do um, a delayed time. It can do a repetitive like PWM type cycle. It can change duty cycle of a PWM. It's really good for if you you don't want to get a microcontroller involved. You just want a frequency generated or a pulse generated. Um, it's it's great. It's really easy to use, and there's like thousands of example circuits. And we thought with the retro styling, and also um, because we have a video from Colin that came out this week, I was like, oh, I should show people how you can get 555s. And also, 555s have really improved in um, capabilities. Like yeah. they're they're not uh, as clunky and uh, power hungry as they used to be. They're actually uh, quite cool and easy to use um, in wide voltage ranges and uh, very low current draws. And if uh, you're a super fan, you've seen um, our puppet and our cartoon character and also our plushie. We named uh, the 55 Timer Hans after the inventor of the 55 Timer chip. Um, we don't have any, any of these more left, but uh, that's some of the things that we've done over the years. I also have a 555 uh, Timer stool from Evil Mad Scientists. Uh, laboratories that I that I bought and then uh, Hans is one of the puppets in the circuit playground kit series and then uh, last week Colin did a 555 timer video so I thought I'd play that and then we'll jump into the uh, search on DigiKey. Sure. Why is the triple five timer one of the best known ICs of all time? Well it's been around a long time and there's a crazy amount of example circuits out there for it. It's also cheap easy to use, and most of all, versatile. A 555 timer can be used as a timer, performing a single action after a specific period of time, an oscillator, generating a repeating waveform at a specific frequency, a PWM signal generator, outputting a waveform of varying pulse width for controlling servo motors, LEDs, etc. Plus less practical uses, like using two of them together to create a stepped tone generator, AKA Tari Punk console. For a modern update to the 555, consider the TLC 551. It's pin compatible with the original, has a wider input voltage and higher accuracy. Okay, so uh, let's kick it off. You want to uh, find these? Yeah, so um, 555 timers, you know, they've been making them for decades and decades. Um, they're, they're still useful all the time, like we use them in our Dradio kits, but uh, we also see them a lot of times in, um, you know, learning to solder or learning to engineer because um, they're a great way to, you know, make a simple circuit that you don't have to worry about software or firmware being the issue. Um, so many things have been replaced with microcontrollers, um, but then you have to deal with microcontroller programming and like bootloaders and firmware and, and computer and toolchain. 555, it just, it just always works, and they're like rock solid. They're really hard to damage. I've never seen a broken 555. Um, they always seem to work as long as you're using them with the, the ranges that they, they function at. Um, so going to the computer. I'll close this up. Um, okay, so the um, NE555 is like the original classic, and you can still get it. If you happen to need like one of the originals, um, Let's say we want the uh, dip package. Oh, they're not in stock, but let's. Oh, wait, let's see. Uh, sorry, dip. Any of these? Yes. No? No, they're not in stock because they're obsolete. Um, but uh, it looks like Rochester usually has them, but they're out of stock right now. Um, the original uh, could run up to about 100 kilohertz. Um, it ran from about 4.5 to 16 volts and drew uh, 10 milliamps. So, you know, that's, that's good TTL logic uh, voltages and current. You need a lot of voltage, you need a lot of current uh, to use electronics. Um, you know, you can run off of 5 volts, but you really need 5 volts. You can't run it lower. Um, that said, uh, you know, 
oscillators have improved uh, quite a bit in the meantime. Um, so if we just look for, we'll just go to clock timing, programmable oscillators, and then, yeah, these are all the 555s. Oh, you don't forget, you can get dual 555s if you ever need, uh, you know, two circuits, two 555 circuits, like Atari Punk consoles, I think. Usually you have one for frequency and one for, like, duty cycle or something. Um, so you'd have two oscillators. So it is possible to get uh, two for ones. Uh, let's look at only, you know, ones that are in stock and available at DigiKey. Thankfully, you can get 555s. You can't get a lot of chips, but um, hey, you can even get them in uh, this is all we get. VGA. <laughs> you have to build everything out you of 555s. You can build everything out of 555s. Five, five, five. Okay, yeah. so let's look at 8-dip. Um, eight, eight because I think a lot of people, when they're first playing with 555s, just on a breadboard, they want to breadboard their circuit. Um, so let's also only look at active ones so you can not get anything that's not available. Um, so here's something, that, the first thing that's interesting. So, um, you know, the original was 4.5 to 16 volts um, or 18 volts. But chances are you want to be able to run off of a couple batteries. And so, you know, we can select a range that's, you know, you can run it off of one or, or three volts up to 15, so that's kind of nice. Um, there's also different uh, frequency ranges. So, you know, you can get ones originally that was, um, you know, 100 kilohertz, we can see. They go up to megahertz now. And then the current, the supply current, is in the microamp range. So you can actually run these off of a battery. Now, there are um, different, you know, there's a lot of different ones. Like the TLC551 that we used in the Dradio has a special 100 milliamp output. So you can actually use it uh, to drive a small speaker. Or I think maybe it's a 10 milliamp output. So you can drive a, a transistor to a speaker. Um, to check the, do you, there's some kind of, kind of inter, like there's been interesting mods and hacks and, and tweaks to the 555 to increase um, like the output current or um, you know, decrease the runtime current. Um, so uh, do check that out if you have special needs. But if you just want, you know, a simple 555 that's in stock, uh, TLC 555 will do the job. Looks like these are available. There's 2,000 of them or so. Um, and this one can run from 3 to 15 volts, uh, draws 360 microamps and up to uh, 2.1 megahertz in through hole. And it's, you know, less than a dollar in quantity. It's 40 cents. So that's the thing. These are really cheap too. Um, if you are doing, you know, workshop or you, you want to teach people electronics or uh, you want to mess around and you don't want to spend a lot of money, a 555, you can, you can build projects for a year on 555s and uh, you won't spend more than $10 on it. So uh, check this out. You might also want to get a, um, you know, a parts pack from Adafruit with resistors and a breadboard. Um, put that together with the 555 and uh, you could be having a really good time. Even a couple of potentiometers. Uh, you can make blinking circuits, uh, buzzers. Um, I um, I guess it, it's avi- well, it's available somewhere. I wrote an article when I was senior editor of Popular Science like almost 15 years ago now, maybe more. Um, and what I did is I cracked open a digital camera and I had it so the uh, button would press over and over and I put the camera on a kite and I showed how to take photos from a kite because we didn't have drones back then that you could just get easily. And I flew this digital camera up in the air and I took a bunch of photos and I showed how to do it. Um, and I had to make it fit all in a page, a printed page. Um, yeah, I remember science. that. Yeah. Kind of, yeah, it's like a perfect example. It's like how to replace a a signal yeah, that goes go burp, 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 every burp, 10 burp, seconds yeah. it pulses yes could you use a mic controller sure but a lot of people yeah. don't have it um this and uh you know big cap and two or three resistors and you're done That's it might it. be on google like scholar or something wherever they scan in popular science Do you look it up no the, the maker? no um <laughs> and then uh at make when we launched the first issue we did uh, aerial kite photography yes I think that was it. Was it was that my article in Make? No, that was. What was uh, my article? The, in the first Make one. Yeah. Ah, uh, I don't remember. Maybe like about. No, uh, I'll find out. Maybe it was about. Uh, Aerial. Air wave bubble. I don't know. Okay, I don't know. Okay. All right. Well, let's end the great search now. Yeah. So we can do other stuff. Okay. So that is. 
That is a great search. I'm getting a song later. <laughs> okay.